Welcome back, I'm That Chemist, and in today's video we're going to be discussing what cubanes are, why people make them, and we're also going to be ranking cubanes based on how impressive they look. If you know what a cubane is already, make sure you share your cubane origin story in the comments. I first learned about cubane in my organic chemistry class. Around the time I started doing research, it came up more and more as a molecule that was getting featured in chemistry papers. There's another chemistry YouTuber, Tom, um, hello, also known as Explosions and Fire, who's been planning to make cubane for a while now, and I'm sure that it'll make it sooner or later. So what is cubane, and why should you care? Cubane is a cube-shaped molecule, and while you might think that it's just a pretty looking molecule with no practical uses, it's actually a fancy building block that medicinal chemists want to use as a substitute for benzene rings in new drug candidates. Oftentimes, drug candidates are referred to as APIs, which stands for Active Pharmaceutical Ingredients, which is distinct from, but inclusive of, approved drugs. That means that all drugs are APIs, but not all APIs are approved drugs. A new drug candidate is an API which still needs to achieve FDA approval before it can be marketed. So to recap, medicinal chemists, chemists who design and discover new pharmaceutical drugs, want to use cubanes as a replacement for benzene rings in new APIs. Why would medicinal chemists want to replace benzene? One reason is because benzene is flat, but cubane is a cube. When you want to put stuff on a benzene ring, it'll always be constrained by the shape of the benzene ring, i.e. flat. And since the ring is flat, all of the stuff sticking off the benzene ring is also going to be in the plane of the benzene ring, more or less. For cubane, however, this is not the case. Since cubane is 3D, you can have stuff sticking off the cubane in 3D space. This can be useful for making an API that interacts better with its target, such as a specific protein or receptor that a medicinal chemist is trying to target. To summarize, substituting a benzene ring with a cubane in an API could lead to potentially better or altered binding to the target, which is often desirable in medicinal chemistry when a new API is being developed. In addition to being 3D, cubanes can also have different sorts of metabolites compared to benzene. Sometimes benzene rings can undergo epoxidation to form toxic metabolites, although this doesn't always happen. Biochemistry is complicated. When drugs enter our body, they eventually need to get eliminated from our body. While the whole point of taking medicine is for it to enter our body and interact with our body, sooner or later our body needs to get rid of it. Sometimes drugs are excreted unmetabolized. That just means that they're chemically unchanged from the active form of the drug. Other times, drugs must be metabolized before our body can eliminate them. It is possible that medicinal chemists could develop a drug which is able to interact with a biochemical target in the body, but after it serves its purpose, it may be metabolized in the body into potentially toxic metabolites. This can also vary in different populations of people. Even if you have the same drug and you give it to a lot of different people, it could be possible that toxic metabolites only form in certain populations. Not only can this happen in specific populations, it can also vary between the biological sexes. So this is something of utmost importance to consider when developing a new API. Aside from medicinal chemistry, cubanes are also of interest more broadly. Another area of interest for cubanes is in energetic materials, as in the case of heptanitrocubane and octanitrocubane. It's speculated that the ring strain of the cubane system could be exploited for energetic materials, but as far as I know, these have only been prepared on a small scale due to the challenges of preparing energetic cubanes. Basically, a very nitrated cubane could maybe be very energetic. In fact, Tom has a great video on this. If you haven't checked out Tom's videos on cubanes before, make sure you check them out. If you've never visited Tom's channel before, Tom's a really entertaining guy and I'm sure you'd love his videos about cubanes. While there are other other uses aside from medicinal chemistry and energetic materials, for the most part it's really just being explored in medicinal chemistry and research. If you want to know more specific details about the chemistry of cubanes, as a researcher for a research perspective, I'll include a couple good reviews in the video description that are fairly thorough. If you're interested in reading more about cubanes, make sure you check out the links in the video description that we put in every video. If you like cubes, you might be interested in receiving a cube from this video's sponsor, Factor. Thanks to all the love you showed them last time, they're back once again. Factor delivers fresh, ready-made meals right to your door. Factor meals require no prep and mess, taking the guesswork out of what to eat for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. With options for keto, low-calorie, vegan, and vegetarian lifestyles with dietitian approved ingredients. If you want to modify your food preference or skip a week, Factor makes it easy to do so. In a rush, grab a prepared smoothie or keto shake for a quick snack, or heat and eat a chef-quality meal with no prep or cleanup necessary. Some of their past menu options include Louisiana Shrimp, Gouda Gravy, the Peanut Buddha Bowl, you know, I've never eaten Buddha before, but I guess I'm willing to try anything once. Use my link, or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGCHEMISTAPR50 for 50% off your first box. That way, they'll know you came from here. I want to thank Factor for their support of this channel. Earlier I was saying that the main application for cubanes is in medicinal chemistry. Now while that might be the main promising application, 
A lot of the time, chemists just make stuff for the sake of making it, and I'm no exception. Someone else who isn't an exception is Philip Eaton. His group was the first one to synthesize cubane in 1964, and if you look into the literature about cubanes, Eaton's name shows up all over the place. Speaking of cubane, why don't we start with cubane? Cubane may have been the first cubane, but it's so 50 years ago. Cubane can go right into C tier, which is appropriate because it starts with a C. Yes, we're starting the tier list off by doing that, because that just happens to be how it works today, okay? This is this is the rules of the tier list for today. If you don't like the rules of this tier list, you can go watch a different tier list video of mine where the rules are a little bit more to your liking, but you don't know what the rules are gonna be like for this one yet, so you better watch and find out. So there's a whole lot of Cubanes on here. I'm gonna go off the script for this one because you guys like a bit more of an authentic touch. Cubane might belong in C tier. There's a lot of other Cubanes on here which are a lot more exciting than Cubane. We're gonna be ranking them based off of how impressive they look, and and Cubane compared to these other ones just doesn't even match. Cubane is cool, but what about Cubine? You might not think that Cubine really exists, but this has been prepared via 1,2-Di-Iodo-Cubane. Upon treatment with terp-butyllithium, Cubine is formed as an intermediate. Cubine is amazing, Cubine can go right into S tier, and you might wonder why the heck would anybody even make Cubine? Obviously so that we can put it on a pedestal. This is added onto a pedestal via Diels alder type reaction. Is this useful? I don't know, probably not. It doesn't look very useful to me, but it is kind of cool, so I think it's fair to put that in S tier, I guess. Okay, so there's some other impressive ones. We didn't really talk about how Cubanes are made too much. Tom's tried to make Cubane on his channel, and I definitely encourage you to go and harass Tom. I mean, check out Tom's channel and his videos on Cubane. The way that Tom wants to make Cubane is from cyclopentanone. Cyclopentanone can be converted over several steps, but you're not making Cubane, and you don't need to know that. Now, while that's one way to make Cubane, there are a lot of other ways to make Cubane derivatives. One of the ways you can do this is by combining four equivalents of the same alkyne, and you get an octasubstituted product. This works for certain types of Cubane derivatives, but not others. Some of the ones that this works on include octamethylcubane. This one's pretty cool. I don't think it can go quite into S tier because it's a little bit simple. It's just got methyl groups, you know, can't do too much with that, but it is kind of nice. It's a bit like a porcupine molecule. But one of the ones that I really like that's made from alkynes is octacyclopropyl cubane. I think this is my new favorite molecule. This is clearly like the most based molecule of all time. That's pretty impressive as well until you look at octaphenyl cubane. Octaphenyl cubane doesn't look too bad when it's drawn like this, but when you draw out the full benzene rings, this thing is an absolute mess right into S tier. There are some other octasubstituted cubanes, such as perfluorooctylmethyl cubane. This is definitely going to be better than octamethyl cubane, so I think we can bring octamethyl cubane down a tier and put perfluorooctymethyl cubane into A tier. Fluorines are pretty cool. This is a big greasy molecule. How could you not love perfluorooctylmethyl cubane? I don't think it quite belongs in S tier because you can't do anything with it. I mean, you probably can't do anything with those other ones either, but hey, this is my channel and I'm going to put this in A tier, okay? Another octasubstituted cubane that we've featured on the channel previously is perfluorocubane, and if you haven't checked out that video yet, I'll include a link to it in the description where you can see pictures of what perfluorocubane actually looks like. The authors were very specific that I could only use the pictures in that previous video, so I apologize for not including them here. If you'd like to see what they look like, you can go check out the video there, and I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Tom's favorite cubane is probably octanitrocubane. Look at all those nitro groups. This thing's super duper substituted. The reason why people are interested in the nitro cubanes is due to the high energy of the cubane system, as well as the presence of the nitro groups. So this has a lot of nitrogen and oxygen in it. This thing should completely combust, and maybe it would be energetic. I don't think anybody's ever made enough of this to really give it a proper test, but that hasn't stopped researchers from trying to find new ways to make highly substituted nitrocubane derivatives. Octanitrocubane, also an easy S tier. Octasubstitution is a pretty good indicator for how impressive something is. En route to these sorts of things, some extremely cursed cubane derivatives have been made. In fact, these are so cursed, I think we're going to have to take everything down a tier. That's right, I just did that. Some of the highly substituted nitrocubane derivatives we have here also feature elements such as lead, bromine, and tin. Now this tin one is so cursed you probably don't even believe that that's been made. This group out of DC decided that they would try and make more substituted nitrocubane derivatives by first metallating the ring with these crazy organometallic groups such as tin and lead and silicon. They tried treating this with bromine and it replaced the methyl group on each of the tins with a bromine. That's, that's absolutely insane. This molecule, I don't even know how this exists. And then we look at this one, this is just like tetraethyl lead but on a cube and people in their group were okay with making that. This is pretty cursed. If you see some of the chemistry they do in this paper, all of it just seems absurdly, horrendously toxic and weird. Definitely a paper you want to check out, even if you're not a chemist. Easily S tier, there's no competition. I don't think that there's ever been a molecule less deserving of S tier than this tin cubane insanity. Absolutely bonkers. 
They also made this Tetra Bromo derivative. They made this from the lead one, but it isn't as impressive as any of the other ones. I think it probably is a little bit cooler than octanitrocubane, but because we don't have like a tier between A and S, this one we can just put right in between A and S tier. We'll just put it right here. We'll put it, put it somewhere like there. How, how's that? I think this is fine, right? This is fine, guys, right? This is totally fine. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, sir, I'm Arisa. Oh, oh. So that's the majority of the insanity of the tier list so far. We got the absolute bonkers ones out of the way. Or have we? Let's talk about Latepra Cube. Earlier we were talking about medicinal chemistry, and Latepra Cube is a cubane analog of a phenyl derivative that was examined as a potential bioisostere for the benzene ring. That was a lot of complex words, so we're not going to go too much into the medchem in this episode, but this is an actual API that's been prepared with a cube in it. That has to go right into S tier. Any API with a cube in it is easily going to be S tier. That is extremely impressive, and we have a couple other ones. Why don't we put those in as well? This one's a bit like an amino acid, but it's got this weird tricyclic system with a sulfur in it, and it's an amino acid, and yeah, it still also has another carboxylic acid. That one can also go right into S tier. Now, I'm sure this one's making you upset, and I apologize, but uh, you can forgive me if you want, but you don't have to forget. You can remember. Speaking of remembering, I just remembered we have another octa-substituted cubane, which is even more ridiculous. Buttercubane, or as I like to call it, Buttercube. Buttercube was made through another crazy way, where they already had most of the cubane built, but then they just had a couple double bonds, and when they tried to add it together, they got a bit of Buttercube, but they also got a bit of another product that looked something like their starting material, but a little bit different. This thing clearly doesn't want to exist, but I want this to exist so badly. I'm so glad that this has been made before, and I would absolutely love to make Buttercube one day. If you want to see someone make Buttercube, make sure you comment down below. There's enough chemistry YouTubers that someone's got to be able to make Buttercube. There's got to be someone who can do it and I want Buttercube to exist. Buttercube goes right into S tier. There's a couple other crazy ones. You might not have noticed them yet, such as Bicubal. This is two cubanes. Two cubanes is pretty impressive. There was this paper where they made all sorts of these crazy long cubane derivatives, and I just don't think that there's any comparison between four cubanes and two. Like, if you just combine two benzene rings and four cubanes with an iodine versus two cubanes, the two cubanes is just so much less impressive. Like, that would almost put it into, like, F tier. But we have cubane on there, two cubes, Two cubes probably is better than one cube. Why don't we put bicubal into B tier? We're just putting it into B tier because it's better than cubane. There's absolutely nothing, nothing about bicubal that would make us put it into B tier. There's, it's just, it's just better than cubane. B for better. Are you sure about that? Next, we have this mercury cubane insanity. So if you thought cubane was pretty crazy and insane and exotic, well, how about two mercuries connecting two cubanes together? That is so cursed. That can go right into S tier. I don't even have anything more to say about that. If you're a fan of benzyl alcohol, you might also be a fan of cubyl methanol. I've never smelled cubyl methanol, but I'd be curious to know what it smells like. I personally am a simp for molecular building blocks. When I see a single functional group off of an interesting building block, I simp so hard. So cubyl methanol, I think is pretty cool. Cool starts with a C. Why don't we put it into C tier? We have some other ones left here. Earlier, I was saying that any drug with a cube in it belongs in S tier. This one's difluocubaruron. I can't even say that one properly. This is an analog of a drug which has a benzene ring as well. Instead, they have a cube. They also have this weird urea motif where it's an N acyl urea. That's, that's pretty cursed as well. I know this isn't a cursed tier list. This one's pretty cursed. Why don't we put this one into S tier as well? It's a drug with a cube. Drugs with cubes go into S tier. We have dideuterocubane. So we've got two deuterium atoms. If you don't know what deuterium is, deuterium's an isotope of hydrogen. Normal hydrogen is hydrogen 1, but sometimes, including in our normal water, we have a tiny bit of deuterium instead of normal hydrogen 1. So here they've made cubane with a deuterium instead of a hydrogen on two sides of the molecule. This might be useful if you wanted to add like a deuterium label for something like if you were studying the chemistry of it, or maybe if you were doing some metabolic studies you wanted to do that. Deuterium is kind of an interesting topic that we'll probably cover in a video eventually. Dideuterocubane, it's got to be a little bit better than cubane, so why don't we put it into C tier? But you know, it starts with a D, guys. Will you guys just watch? watch these videos if I put everything into the tier that it starts with? I, I don't know. Dideuterocubane, it's kind of neat. Is it useful? I don't know. Like, I probably wouldn't use that. I don't know what you'd use it for. There's like no functional groups on there. There are some that do have functional groups, and one example of that is diethylcubane. Alkynes are pretty neat. You can do this stuff called click chemistry with it. Click chemistry was awarded the Nobel Prize last year, and 
A couple of my friends have made videos on it before, such as Chemiolis or Casual Chemistry. Casual Chemistry is a good channel if you're actually doing research in organic chemistry and you want to learn more about how the chemistry works. Casual Chemistry is a good channel. I haven't plugged him before. Make sure you check his channel out. Click Chemistry is pretty cool. You can add these things called azides to alkynes and you can use this in biological systems to label stuff sometimes. It's really good chemistry that just works, which is why it's called Click Chemistry. Click Chemistry is pretty cool. Diethyl cubane, pretty cool as well. You know, a couple alkynes, you can do all sorts of chemistry with those. I think this at least belongs probably in like C tier. Uh, it's it, it could be better. You know, it could have two different functional groups, but it doesn't. Practically speaking, if you're in the lab and you want to do cubane chemistry, you're probably going to either start with cubane dicarboxylic acid dimethyl ester or the monomethyl ester. The way that the monomethyl ester is made is just by hydrolyzing the dimethyl ester. And for whatever reason, when they do this, only one of them hydrolyzes. In organic chemistry, they try and teach you like these conditions work all the time for every reaction ever. But a lot of the time you just kind of screen stuff and you see what works. And uh, real chemistry is figuring out what actually happens when you do stuff. So you can make predictions all day long, but at the end of the day, you need to actually test chemistry in the lab to do some real science. So the monocarboxylic acid derivative is a little bit more useful to me. It's a little bit more interesting. There's two functional groups, but the diester is just two esters. So the diester, it's not that good. I think that the diester probably actually belongs in F tier because it's the cheapest building block we currently have. And the monomethyl ester we can put into D tier because it's pretty cool. Now you might be like, hey, how can you put those in the same tier as Cubane? I thought you had that whole conversation before about like, oh, it has to be better than Cubane because this is all we have. Like there are other building blocks that exist, but they're too expensive for most researchers to use. So if you're a synthetic chemist, make us some more Cubanes. We got to get some more Cubanes in the chemical space. You know, earlier in the video, when I was talking about the position of substituents on cubanes having potential utility in binding affinity, practically speaking, that isn't a reality yet because there's just not that many commercially available cubanes that are actually usable for an API. The cost of cubane has to go down. It's time to get cubane as cheap as possible. I love seeing all these cool, neat derivatives. I just hope that we can see in another 50 years time that cubane will not just be in APIs, it'll be in approved drugs. In addition to being in drugs, some inorganic chemists have figured out they could make a bidentate cubane ligand with it. Bidentate just means it bites it twice. Bidentate means literally that, dent like teeth, dental, uh, bi meaning two. So bidentate, this bites onto the metal twice. So a metal can bind to a bidentate thing twice, so bidentate. This one's pretty cool. I don't know why they left the iodides on there. There might have been some like inorganic chemistry reason for leaving it on there. I'm going to bet that it's for practical synthesis reasons and they didn't feel like proto deiodinating it. So this bidentate cubane ligand is it's pretty cool. I don't think it's as cool as like perfluorocubane. I, I don't think it even comes close. I think the bidentate cubane ligand can go into B tier. B for bidentate. Cubal phenyl ketone. I like this one a lot. I don't know why, but I really like cubal phenyl ketone. I think it's kind of cute. It's like the child of two different dynasties, the cubane dynasty and the benzene dynasty. This is beautiful. I think cubal phenyl ketone is one of the most beautiful molecules that exists. And for that reason, we're going to put it right into S tier, but it doesn't quite fit. So that's okay. There's a couple other interesting ones left, such as cubal triflate, cubane carboxylic acid, and tetracarbomethoxy cubane. Tetracarbomethoxycubane is hard to say, and it was even harder to draw. This one took me quite a while, and uh, yeah, not too much to say about this one. This is kind of like equally useless to the one in F tier. Maybe you could selectively do some chemistry on the remaining positions. This is a pretty boring molecule. I think this one can also go right into F tier. If you just have a billion esters, you need to get good. Like, come on, tetracarbomethoxycubane, get good. Here are the last two molecules, cubal triflate and cubane carboxylic acid. If you don't know what a triflate is, a triflate is a really good leaving group in synthetic chemistry. Oftentimes, if you work with something like triflic acid, it fumes like crazy because it's super duper corrosive. And to put this onto stuff, you often use triflic anhydride. Triflic anhydride reacts with water to make two equivalents of triflic acid, the crazy fuming stuff. So triflic anhydride is like a sledgehammer. So when I see cubal triflate, I know somebody put in some time and effort to make this thing, probably just from like cubanol, the corresponding alcohol. Pretty impressive molecule, still simple overall. It's important to note that a lot of these cubanes were derived from one of these cubane starting materials, such as this dimethyl ester at the bottom. So to somehow get to cubal triflate is extremely impressive, even though it looks relatively simple. Cubal triflate, it's pretty cool. I don't think it's as cool as a bidentate cubane ligand. I don't even think it's quite as cool as octamethyl cubane, but it is about as cool as cubal methanol. Pretty impressive that somebody made this. The structure itself isn't insane, but it's pretty impressive. We'll put it into C tier. Last but not least, we have cubane carboxylic acid. 
This is like the benzoic acid of cubanes. I wonder if this has a smell. It is a little bit impressive, but I think it's still pretty boring because it's only got one functional group handle. I think this is probably about as good as cubal triflate, although it's a lot easier to make, so why don't we put it into D tier? So as you can see, there are a lot of cubanes. You might have thought that I covered a lot of cubanes in this video, but there's over 2,000 reported cubanes on Reaxis. If you like this video or have any other ideas for future videos, make sure you leave them down in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.